Hi, Soul Family. How are you? We're outside. It's beautiful outside. I'll show you today. Look at this. I was just talking to my friend John. Look at the pelican down there. He just moved back from Cambria and he's back in San Diego, North County. And I said, you know, how do you feel there? Are you happy to be back or do you miss Cambria? And he said, no, I'm so happy. And I'm like, that's good to know because I, you know, I love Morro Bay and Cambria and I think about going to places like that, you know, and he says that he, uh, he grew up down there and he used to feel like he didn't belong, but now he's better within himself and so he's happy to be back. And I thought, that's really cool, but I gotta show you something. I don't know, you probably can't see it. Those pelicans are so high that they almost look like airplanes. They're so cool. God, isn't that beautiful? Oh, I know you can't see them. Like, I wish I could zoom in for you guys. They're flying high. They've dropped their burdens. They let go of anything they've been holding on to because they wouldn't be able to fly that high if they couldn't, if they were carrying around all a bunch of garbage. There's one right there. That's what pelican means, right? Drop your burdens. Who do you need to forgive? Um, because you think about the pelicans, they, they scoop the water out, right? In order to get what they're catching. Oh, they're so cool. And they're carrying all that water, that emotional water, right? And they're not gonna fly very high with all that in there, so they have to dump it out and keep only what they need, which is the lessons, right? Keep your catch, whatever it is that you caught that was important for you and let everything else go. Anyway, I was talking to him because, you know, I'm always thinking about where, where do I want to be? And I said, you know, I had my awakening 10 to 13 years ago. And before that, I was a Jehovah's Witness my whole life. And so when I had my reawakening, that fell away, which left me completely alone, right? All of those, you, you don't hold on. Once you leave that organization, that's the end of it, right? You've got no one. So everyone that I'd known my entire life in Canada as well as in the United States were Jehovah's Witnesses, right? And now I wasn't, so it's kind of like, we're done. Um, I'm talking about this because <laughs> there's probably so many other people that um, are coming out of religion too, and I don't know how many people are in a cult like I was, but, um, but what I said was, you know, there's my king. It's okay, babe. You can just say hi, my Mr. Fat Pants. Um, the message is, uh, and I said to him, you know, he says, well, I do a body test about where I feel good. And I said, I think because I uh, was, when I had my awake, reawakening, I went to Wisconsin. So during my reawakening process, I was in Wisconsin and I was in Sedona. So those are the only places that I feel at home because that's how we're only place I was authentically truthfully just myself was there so I keep going back to those places and that's when he said you know I do a body test and wherever I my body feels good you know it, I feel is good for me and I said well I feel great when I'm with my soul family in Wisconsin and I feel I said the only place I actually feel like my body feels good is Sedona unless I'm outside and then when I'm outside I belong everywhere nature's where it's at so we talked yesterday about how you know sometimes you can't get to a location that you need to be in or where there's a soul family group or your tribe and what can you do and spend mu as much time as you can outside gosh everyone's showing up today the snowy egrets are they're all coming to the shore because the big blue heron came in the big boss came in <laughs> whenever the big boss comes in it's funny See, there he is. He's landing on top of the, did you see him just land? When he shows up, everybody kind of gets out of his way. He's the king of his castle. Look at him up there. You guys can't see him. I can. It's pretty cool. So I thought, you know, yesterday I did the Zodiac for you guys because I know people have asked for that. And so today I was, uh, somebody sent me the Leo King and I hadn't listened to him. And <laughs> he's quite flashy with all of his gold chains and, um, I didn't do my hair, sorry. Um, <laughs> yeah, he's funny, but, uh, I thought, well, who do I read for today? I don't have a lot of time, you know, but I wanted to connect. And so he just did one for the collective, you know, the United Collective for all of us. So what is it that the United Collective, all of us need to hear? And I, I always go back to that, don't I? Cause that's just the way spirit taught me. You know, it's about all of us. It's not about just one particular sign. 
So I thought, what do I, what, what would I read with? And I got this book when I was up in um, Boulder, California. There's a little town called Boulder. I found accidentally, I was camping, trying to camp in my truck, and there was no campgrounds that would let me just camp in my truck, and there was n no hotels that weren't really expensive, and I was, I'd been gone for a while, and um, I just kept driving. I thought, well, maybe the further inland I drive, I will find something, and I found this little magical, curvy, windy road through the forest, and it was so beautiful. It was like a lost glen. It was gorgeous, and uh, I la and landed in this little town. So they had a spiritual shop in there, and I got this book, and it's called Harmonic, Har Harmonic Heart Visions of Goddesses, Angels, Mermaids, and Fairy Tales, and I thought about a place to go today that I haven't been since I was a kid. My mom and I, uh, and my brother, we, and my sister, we went. Catalina, remember I was saying that, you know, I don't know if you guys all saw on YouTube, but I was saying how I could take my little tiny home, my little schoolie bus, this is when I was thinking I was gonna get a schoolie bus, and go over on the ferry, and I, I'd be in Catalina. I could go all the places I wanted to go, right? So I thought about that today. Why don't you go to Catalina? You haven't been there in so long. And I, and I, and I was somebody, uh, I met an artist in, well, I met him on Facebook, I didn't really meet him, um, in, in the desert, Palm Desert, and he was, he, he did a painting of, um, in Catalina, and he was doing the Garibaldis, and I, I, I used to dive in Catalina all the time. So, so that's, I've said I hadn't been there since a kid, so I had, I've gone there on a dive boat, that's right. So I've gone there, I haven't stayed there since then. So I thought what I would do is, for the United Collective, oh, hold on, let me just see something. I was gonna, well, I was just gonna let the, the, the book open up, and it did, it, it opened up to the goddesses of, from fervent fire. So then I thought, ooh, I wonder if there's like fire, water, air, earth in here, because we could have done it that way, but it opened up to this, half woman, half horse, and then one woman, volcano. Gosh, that place looks amazing. Look at that place. What is the name of the place that I always wanted to, I always said when I was a little kid, I wanted to go to, and why can I never remember it? It's the island with the big, big island behind and they've got little huts that are on the water. I can't go anywhere like that right now because I don't have a freaking passport. So what we're gonna do is, um, what, what is it that Spirit wants us to talk about um, for the United Collective? Just a, a message for everybody today. So I ask for Archangel Michael to preside over this reading and tap me in on what I need to hear, what I need to see, what I need to feel. Help me express myself in a way that's easy for you to understand. Correct for neutrality. I wish you could see my boy without me scaring him. Hi, sweetheart. You here to help me? Yeah? Okay. Correct for neutrality on all levels. For the United Collective, Archangel Michael preside. Keep my energy clear. Put a shield around this reading. Liberating luminance. So I see somebody leading a unicorn through their emotional waters. She's an angel, and she's leading that unicorn. The unicorn is a gifted one, but she's got that unicorn, and she's guiding him. She's not yanking him. She doesn't have, she's holding the, 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 the bridle around his neck is like a ribbon. So, So because of her beauty, he was misled. She came to him as an angel. She's a sorceress. She's a spellbinder. And this one followed blindly through their emotional waters. And the purpose of this was to, this was an illusion. It was beautiful. The sorceress stroked the head of this one. And at first it felt that this one was a little nervous, but then it felt like it was real and the delusion and the illusion was shattered. And this angel appeared. But then all of a sudden, in moments, 
She took her knife and she cut the unicorn's horn. That was the one missing ingredient that that one needed in order to create her potion. This one had something she needed. The sight, the vision, the sacred vision. So, beautiful, this is amazing. And then the real one came. This one is the real one. You can see the same story because it was repeated. So how do I know who's the real one and who's false, right? The first one was beautiful. The first one seemed like an angel. What is that song? Like the angel you, you, oh, what is that song? You guys know it. It's somebody who's figured someone out and they're saying, um, like the angel, you, you, you let me believe you led me to believe who you were, or something like that, I can't remember it. But anyway, so then that kind of makes you nervous, right? Now, who do I trust now? How can I move forward now? I've been caught before by a beautiful one that appeared to be an angel. And they ended up being an enchantress, or it could be a man, right, an enchanter. A reverse, it was just a magician. And so that would make you nervous and that wouldn't make you, uh, you wouldn't be trusting, you would be protective of yourself, right? But you have to remember that you've, you've been through that now and you know how they led you forward. You're not the same person that you were then. You've grown. This one that comes forward now, this one is an angel. And time is, is very important because this one was coming to rescue this young unicorn. And even though, yes, it felt like a rope was around this one's neck again that made them uncomfortable, right? I, I, I don't want, I, I have, I've been freed. For, uh, I don't want that around my neck. I, I don't want that. I've been there and you start to panic maybe. But that was only to this, so this one could guide this one to a san sacred sanctuary Oh, I'm getting very emotional. She spoke in a voice that only he could hear. That's how he knew. She assured him, let purity illuminate and graciously guide your forged fate. Leave the darkness behind Shadow's Gate. She didn't come to him the way the others did. I kept, you know, that message I got, play your music, play your music. She'll hear you, play your music, he'll hear you. They felt the resonance of another vibration. They communicated in a different way. It's like the right words were said or the words didn't need to be said. What did John say to me? I do the body test. If I go to a place and my body feels good there, then I know I'm in a, I'm in a good place. I feel good outside. Anywhere that I am, I belong when I'm outside, but, but I'm not with anyone else. I'm by myself outside, right? I'm with spirit outside. That's why I love it out here. So I've always had a place that I, I, I could have a patio or, or be outside. So where do you feel most comfortable? In nature. Why? It's natural. So you're going to feel comfortable where you can be naturally yourself, where someone else is feeling natural. If there's no facade, they're not trying to say the right words. They're not charming. They're not, sometimes they don't have to say anything at all. You are supposed to trust what you feel, not what somebody says to you. People can actually live their lives and mislead you. They can put on a really good game. They can put on a really good show. I listened to another reader yesterday and she, she was very upset and she says, I'm gonna tell the story of how I was, I was um, fooled by a criminal, smooth criminal. And the person cat, catfished, I was catfished by a criminal. And I listened to her story and I said, yeah, I've had that happening for the last seven years. And uh, they never come forward out of the, out of the darkness, right? They, they, they never go away either, they come back, and, but there's always one lie after another. And so somebody feels the need to lie to you about something. It doesn't matter who they are. It's gonna feel wrong, right? So let me ask, so this is called 
liberating, right? This one was being liberated. They felt like, I don't want to get caught again, but there was a difference. Show me something else. I keep asking that too. It, it, sometimes it, it, they can be very good. Charlatans are um, magicians, charlatans, actors. They're good at what they do. They practice it, right? They practice it and they wouldn't be able to do what they did if they hadn't been successful previously. But you are awakened. So you tune into love, kindness, forgiveness, compassion, mercy. Dove just flew by, right? Peace, gentleness. That's where you go towards. You go away from ridicule, judgment, blame, anger, jealousy. That's the line. That's the line. You, anywhere in that, on that side is not your vibration. It's not where you want to be. I'm wasted. The more I drink, the more I think about you. Wrong direction, right? Sometimes, you know, it's, it's the songs we listen to, the movies we listen to, watch, that makes what is inappropriate seem appropriate. It's not appropriate, right? If somebody doesn't think of you or can't think of you unless they're drunk, they're hanging out at bars, that's not where a spiritual person's gonna hang out. You'll find a spiritual person out in nature. That's why I like nature. That's why I like Sedona. If I'm, I mean, I realize that there's other people that come to Sedona too, but if you're living in Sedona, you're there for a reason. You know, you're gonna find a spiritual person at the beach, not hanging out in their hot little bikini body or, and, and flirting around with their drink in their hand, with their full makeup on. They're, they're gonna be on the shoreline, completely unaware that there are people around them because they're so lost at looking at the rocks and, and, the, and the little animals moving around. That's somebody who's connecting with the elements, right? Somebody that connects to the elements is somebody that connects with me. Is it better now that I'm not around? I think about who we used to be and you think about who you are now. I said that, you know, I was talking to my, my best friend and her husband is my ex-husband from 13 years ago. And actually, has it been 13 years? It's probably at least. And we were friends for five years after that. So I've known him a very long time and he's a really good person. He's a very honorable person, a decent person, but he's not a spiritual person, doesn't get it. She gets it, you know, a little more than, than he does anyway. Um, and that was the thing. She's like, well, it's uncomfortable for him because, you know, he doesn't get that. And uh, so there's the feeling. It's kind of uncomfortable. When we talk about it, we can talk about other things and it's fun and, and I, can, I can go back into that being that person, right? I am still that person inside too, but that's the kind of person that would say to me, can you turn it off? You know, can we talk, you know, not interested in, in what I'm interested in talking, this would be boring to them. This would be like, okay, you know, then you know, if you, you're not gonna be your natural self. You're not gonna, this is how I naturally talk to anybody, right? This is how we speak. So spirit wants us to be natural. They want us to be authentic. They want us to be who we truly are. And when we are that way, uh, people can act for, for a while, but you'll, you'll pick up on it. You'll see it. That's not who they really are. They could talk, you know, a good game in front of people, but then how do they act when they're not around everybody else, right? How do they speak? What comes naturally to them? And then we make excuses, you know, because nobody's perfect. It doesn't, I'm not saying everybody has to be perfect. I'm just saying, what is this person in their natural element? How are they, how do they naturally behave? How do you feel in their com company? Are you relaxed? Do you feel stupid? Do you feel less than? Do you feel like they're judging you? Do you feel like you don't measure up? Or could you literally sit in a room full of people that are ranging from somebody that works at McDonald's to somebody that owns their own retreat to somebody who's a spiritual teacher to somebody who's a home wife, housewife, gardener? They're all in the same environment and everybody is comfortably talking the same and nobody feels less than nobody nobody and in all reality it it seems as though the ones that are have reached the highest position and enlightenment are the most humble then you know you're in the right place right i've been in places like that where you don't feel like someone's trying to make you feel like you don't know what you're talking about or they're not preaching at you right 
They're just engaging in conversation. They support you. They encourage you. They don't remind you of what you need to figure out or how far you haven't come or how much more you need to learn. They don't bring up the past to remind you of what you did. Everybody's just there to encourage one another, right? They're united because we are the united collective. We're all very different, come from very different backgrounds, and yet we all have a common theme running through us, common interest, right? We want nothing to do with the darkness. We want to learn. We want to ascend. We want to be peaceful. We want to be happy. We don't spend time talking about the negative stuff. We, we spend time talking about the positive stuff. We marvel at nature. We can get lost in what we see all around us, no matter where we are. This is not a spiritual community, but this is a beautiful sanctuary for the animals. It is, they're all safe there. And they all flock here. And if somebody leaves a comment and says, thank you for, somebody left a comment on my YouTube channel, I appreciate the comment. They said, thank you for um, speaking about the animal messengers, right? And I said, thank you for recognizing their wisdom right a lot of people are like okay I don't want I don't care about this I just want to know you know is my boyfriend gonna call or is is my ex gonna come back or where what's he doing and, and does he like his new girlfriend and <laughs> that's what I get all day long on my hotline right they don't and, and I'll and I'll they don't want to know what they can do to improve their life or, or um, deal with their illness their physical illness what can I do to make it better one of my clients that I was working with his his I've spoken to you guys about him. His, the girl that he likes, woman that he likes, has health issues and the doctors are telling her she needs to um, be given a bag. She's gonna, they're gonna remove her colon. And he says, I just don't feel that that, I just don't feel that that is necessary. I just, I, I, have, I, I, I have gifts too, I connect too, and I just don't feel, what do you get? And I said, no, Spirit says that's not, she doesn't have to do that. And he said, she's just kind of given up because the doctors, medical doctors, most of them, they're just very happy to cut things away, right? Oh, you don't need this, you know, cut out. How many people get their tonsils out, right? Anything that's in your body was there for a reason. You know, if you don't leave it, right? And, there, and I said, there's always a, 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 a holistic approach to something, a natural way. I'm not a medical doctor. Beautiful black butterfly with white edges just flew by. If it comes by again, I'll show you. It was really pretty. Black with white edges, isn't that interesting? Um, Kissed by the light, I just heard. Coming out of the darkness, kissed by the light. Ooh, I love that. Um, so I said, you know, I'm not a medical doctor and I'm not going to give medical advice. But I'm telling you that spirit, you're right. The, the impression that you got, the feeling that you got is no, that is not the answer. And there is something else you can try. And so um, I said, I would always try the holistic pros first. Or, you know, while you're waiting for that surgery, could just try this. And he's like, I don't know what to do. And I said, what's it called? So he gave me the name of what it was called, and I and I and I and I said, "What is a?" Um, before that, I, I had um, just my cards. I was just using all of them, right? And I, I didn't know what spirit was going to show me, but they kept showing me flowers. Every card was about a little girl with a flower, smelling the flower. And I said, "Flower essences." Doctor Bach. My mother studied under Doctor Bach in England. The Bach flower remedies. And I immediately I said, "What is it called?" He spelled it out, and I went to it, and it. And immediately what came up in the natural healing for it was the Bach flower remedies. And I said, she needs, and I said, you know, you would think they're just flower essences. How powerful could they be? They can be very powerful. When I take my cats in the car, they lose their minds. Liger, you guys might have seen his video. When I took him up to Idlewild, he was foaming at the mouth. He was so terrified. I was so scared he was going to have a heart attack. So when I went to Sedona and I took Willow with me because she couldn't be left behind. Oh, you guys, I took Willow with me. I went, um, it, was, it was a rough trip out. She did better than him, but it was a rough trip out. But when I got to Sedona, you know, all night long, even though she was with me in the, in the Airbnb, she cried and cried, and I thought, I can't have her crying like that. In the Airbnb, she's going to wake everybody up, you know, right next door. So I went to the Whole Foods, and I said, do you guys have any rescue remedy, which is one of the remedies from the Bach Flower Remedies. And they took me over to the side. And what did I find? I found animal rescue remedy. I didn't even know they had animal rescue remedy. I went home and I gave Willow four drops, like they asked. And 
that was the last 15 minutes. It took 15 minutes. That was the last of her upset. She made the entire trip home completely calm. Rescue remedy. And that was the Bach flower remedies. And it's just flower essences. Powerful. Nature is powerful. When the animals have an upset stomach, stomach they go to certain plants and they and, and they eat certain plants. They now they can be sick too. If there's nothing on the on the on the deck, they'll chew at certain things. But they go to nature, right? Out out in nature. And so the best the best thing for us to do is to go to nature, right? And what did I say about even people and about where do you feel? Where do you feel natural? Where does it feel natural? Where can you be natural? Where you can be your own natural self? Um, same thing with what you take into your body. I was all excited because they had. Um, barbecued flavored uh, meatless hamburgers, right? Like the patties, and I was all excited until everybody reminded me, and actually I should have thought of it myself. How do you think they make that tofu taste like that? They make it taste like chicken, or they make it taste like this. It's got chemicals in it, and I thought, shoot, and I'd been eating that every day because I'm a vegetarian, right? So it's the same thing. What's natural? What's natural should go into your body. What's natural should be, your natural state is a state of joy. If you are feeling sad, if you are feeling angry, if you're feeling depressed, that is not your natural state. So if you're feeling that way, what is causing that? You need to see what is the root cause of that, right? Now, as far as she's concerned, she had a problem with her colon. Hi, Victory Sparrow. Hello, Aphrodite's pet. That one lives in there. That's a little house in there. Hi. The most insignificant, overlooked, underestimated, little creature that survives in any element all around the world. That is the victory sparrow. Think about it. It's a nondescript little bird, right? Doesn't have all the beautiful colors of a flamingo, right? <laughs> Two of them just went by. Um, can't talk like a cockatoo or a parrot, but you can throw it in any environment and it's gonna survive and it's gonna do well. That's why it's called the victory sparrow and why Aphrodite graced, was, she felt graced by its presence. That was her pet. She chose that one, right? She didn't choose the flamingo. She didn't choose the fancy one. She chose, she chose the natural one. <laughs> the one that maybe other people wouldn't really notice, the lady wouldn't pay much attention to because they weren't seeking the limelight, right? Oh, it's kind of like, and I will tell you, somebody like Keanu Reeves, I always use him, right? Comes from, he's got a lot of money, he's an actor, you know, just wants to be a regular person. He's very down to earth. Anyone that meets him says the same thing, right? People have made comments about his girlfriend, thinking that, you know, she looks like his mother. And uh, he was alone for a very, very long time, but he, he connected with her. She's an artist and uh, she's, she knows her own self and she, she let her hair go silver, right? Natural, natural. He liked that, he liked that natural, right? I know my twin said to me, what he liked about me is that I don't have fake boobs. I like natural, he said, I like natural. That says something, right? I like natural, good. So I think I'm gonna wrap it at that. It's just about us being natural. It's about, it's about not, you know, we don't have to stand out. And uh, in all reality, if you want to stand out, there's something that you need to work on there. Why do you feel the need to stand out? I think the ones that stand out are the ones who don't try to stand out and they don't even realize. They stand out to me. I notice the Victory Sparrow. I notice all of them. We all have different qualities. We all have different aspects of ourselves that make us unique and beautiful. I'm standing here, sitting here, watching them stand. I've got a blue heron on the edge of one dock and I've got a white huge white crane on the other all of the pelicans and they're all hanging out together that's what i like nobody's got a problem nobody's attacking the other cormorant coming in for a landing i like that where i want to be in a place where that's how we all are right that's what we should strive to be in a place where nobody stands out above the others now I did say when the, when the gray blue heron comes in, the big one, they all kind of get out of his way. They're all congregating around the white ones though. See, the, the blue heron is on the edge of that dock over there, but they're all over on this side. So why are they afraid of that blue heron? Or are they 
They want to impress that, that blue heron. Doesn't mean there's anything wrong with him. They want to impress him. The only one you should want to impress is yourself. The only one that you should compete with is yourself. Because you have no competition. There is no one like you, right? And I mean compete as in you want to learn and, and hone your skills and ascend and be the best of yourself that you can be, right? You want to be around people who don't make you feel like you need to compete. I've always said that. If I have to compete with you, I'm out. Or for you, I'm not interested. I have no competition and I don't, I'm not going to waste my time on that. If, if I've got to get in line, <laughs> hell no. I don't have to get in line. I don't compete with anybody. And that's not because I think that I'm better than anybody. It just means that if I have to compete for or with somebody, then it's not mine, right? It should come easily to me. I just be the best that I can be and uh, keep yourself in a place of understanding. A song right now in the background. I'll forget your face, I swear I will. I ain't gonna try. But when I first heard this song, I was thinking, that guy sounds really cocky, right? It's Justin Timberlake and his buddy talking. And he's, what he was saying is, if you don't recognize how amazing my guy is, my, my buddy here is, we gotta go. You know, we're not gonna try. We're not gonna compete. We're not gonna, we're not gonna come crawling after you. Not, we're not gonna cancel our vacation for you. If you can't recognize what you've got in front of you, then we're moving on. And that's the way it should be. That's the way it should be, right? We'll give you an opportunity, and if you don't recognize what's in front of you, we'll, we've got, we've, we'll go, we'll keep going. No, we're not losing anything. We're not wasting our time. We're not wasting our energy. This is Julia Pfeiffer State Park, up by the coast of, uh, on the way up to uh, Big Sur. I'm just looking at all of the places, because I've been desert bound quite a bit, right? And then I started thinking about Catalina and the ocean. The ocean is very healing too. When I get to the ocean, I love it there too. I just don't like to bake on, on the sand, right? I've got fair skin and I don't want to be ancient before my time. All right, I think that's it, you guys. I'm gonna call it a wrap and I'll send this out and uh, enjoy your day wherever you are. Be grateful for what you have. <sighs> Take some time outside if you can just even 15 minutes. Appreciate the animal messengers and see the ones that stand out for you. What came out for us very, very noticeable were two. Now these ones were all around. Yes, the first thing we saw with the pelicans, we spoke about that, but the victory sparrow came very close, right? And then the black butterfly, black that was kissed by, by the light. I like that. Those are our two messages, transformation and victory. But the, the little sparrow isn't victorious immediately, right? They're in, they endure. They're strong, they're tough, they hang. They're adaptable, they're flexible. They're not worried about whose attention they grab. They work as a team, they do. They work as a community. They all hang together in a community. You'll always find them with the community. All birds working together, right? So it's a community effort. It's, it's, it's the attention on the whole. It's like, I don't need to be the center of attention. I'd like to be around the center of attention, see what's going on, but I don't want all eyes on me, right? It, this is about all of us. None of us are anything without someone else. None of us. So all of those, those are the messages. And then the black, maybe you've come out of the darkness. Maybe you've been hermiting. Maybe you've been in your cocoon, right? It's been dark. You've been processing. You've been um, growing. You've been um, searching. And you were kissed by the light. And now you're flying, full transformation. I'm going to look up what that butterfly is. Black with white tips around the edges. Have a good day, you guys. I love you.